our scripture reading today is from the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 18 through 25. <laughs> now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for their child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you all pray with me for just a moment, please? Good and gracious God, we are thankful this day for this word that comes to us to remind us that you do great things in unexpected ways. We're thankful to be reminded about Joseph, the one who was called righteous, and we pray to be like him as much as we can. Lord, I pray that as we go into this time of learning that the Holy Spirit would move among us and use this story of Joseph to help us be changed, to be the people that you are calling us to be. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds would be acceptable to you. I want to get out of your way, Lord, and simply be the vessel through which you are speaking this day. Help us all to do that. Help us to learn and be changed. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, so I want to admit something about myself to all of you that you probably don't know. You probably don't have any clue about what it is that I'm going to confess to you. I started with a confession last week, so I'll start with a confession this week. I don't know if you all know this about me, but I'm a little tightly wound. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're all shocked, right? You're all shocked to find out that I'm just a little tightly wound. I've been that way my entire life. I've been a restless person my entire life. It took me a long time till I was like in my mid 40s to find out that the reason why I'm restless all the time is because my first way of learning in the world is through motion. I learn through motion. And then my second way of learning is I learn through my ear. But motion, I, you know, like when I was a kid in school, I was one of those tap my, tap my pencil. And the teacher would always say, Jana, stop tapping your pencil. Man, I'd like to tell her today, you are wrong, because the new brain research says, let me tap my pants off, right? Or I was always tapping my foot, or my legs were bouncing up and down, you know. Barbara would tell you that when we were standing up there at communion, my leg, and you all are doing your silent confessions, my legs are just bouncing like crazy, <laughs> because that's how I learn. I'm a restless person, and I, I, I need to be moving. Now, God bless them. There have been people in my life who have tried to help me cure that restlessness. <laughs> go to yoga! Yeah, I'm not picking on you, but go to yoga! <laughs> when I sit down in yoga, you know what I'm doing? I feel like I should be peeling the skin off of myself because it's not, it's not restless enough for me. Sit and meditate. Do you know how I avoided that? I created a meditation group where they were all meditating and I was walking between them. <laughs> because I couldn't, I can't do that. My, my new watch says, take a deep breath. You know, you know, I'm just a restless person. And I don't know why I'm restless. I just know that I am. To many people, that looks like I'm not a peace-filled person. 
because I'm restless all the time. But I am kind of a peace-filled person. I kind of got in trouble in a church for walking up to people and saying, hey, peace, peace, peace. <laughs> pastor took me aside and said, pastors don't do that. We pass the peace of Christ, but we don't go peace. <laughs> I want another, right? Pastors don't do that. I am a peace-filled person, but do you know when I know that I am my most peace-filled? Is when I'm doing something to help create peace in this world. So for example, I recently went to my very first rally, my very first rally where they were talking about helping our system in the world. And I was walking along and I was with the people and I was expecting some big rumble because that's what we're told is that every peace rally that we have in the United States is a big rumble of people trying to take control. Let me reassure you, none of that was happening. And I'm just standing there with this sign, you know, saying, let peace be, you know, a sign somebody handed me. And I was so calm, so filled with this centering, because deep in my heart, I knew I was doing exactly what it is that God wanted me to do. And I was so calm, my daughter even said to me, gee, mom, I thought you'd be more riled up at this thing. But as I walked towards that crowd of people who were rallying to show that we can have peace on earth, that we can do what is good and right and have faith in what's good and right for this world, I felt this centering peace come over me because I knew the steps that I was taking were the steps that were walking in the way that God wanted me to go. I was very peace-filled, making peace in the world. As I thought about that, as I thought about that, I think that one of the reasons why all of the suggestions have never helped for my restlessness is because all of those suggestions to me were about finding peace. Go to yoga and find peace. Do, uh, do meditation and find peace. Relax and find peace. Maybe in my heart of hearts, in my brain, I don't understand finding peace because it's already here. The scripture tells us that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit with peace, the gift of peace. So peace is already inside of us. Maybe it's, I don't understand finding it because it's already here. But what I do understand is making it, creating peace, bringing it about in this world. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, not blessed are the peace finders. Jesus said, those who will go out into this world and create peace are the ones who are blessed in this world. So perhaps maybe my restless brain just does not ever understand finding peace because it's more attuned to making peace in this world. That's where we find Joseph today. Joseph is restless. You know, God loved Joseph in the scriptures. I really wish that one of those ancients had taken the time to write down more about Joseph. Joseph is the one who is always going to do the right thing, right? He's going to accept this woman who's his betrothed, which means he was in a contract with her to be his wife, he's going to accept that she's now pregnant and he's going to put her away quietly. He has every right to divorce her now. That's the right thing to do in his society. But he was even going to go beyond that. He was going to do it quietly so as not to bring shame to her. Because he knew that if he did it publicly and brought her shame, they would kill her. The people would kill her because she was such a bad girl. Joseph was going to do the right thing and put her away quietly, the scripture says. But he's still restless about that. He's still, he's still in this upheaval about what it is he's supposed to be doing in this situation. And much like his ancestor named Joseph, he goes to bed and he has a dream. And in the dream, the angel comes to him and says, Joseph, Mary is with child because the Holy Spirit has brought it about. God wants this child to be born into this world, and you are to help her. Do not be afraid 
You are to help her with this. Take her as your wife. Name this child Jesus. The word Jesus in Hebrew, Yeshua, means God saves. This child, Emmanuel, God with us, is going to bring about to this world what it means. This child, Joseph, will bring peace for all of this world. <clears throat> Joseph wakes up, and you know what he does the next day? He creates peace. He doesn't wait for peace to find him. He doesn't look for it to say, oh, is it coming? No, he knows it's there because God has said, God is with us. Joseph goes out into this world and creates peace by doing exactly what his society tells him he does not have to do. He goes and he takes Mary as his wife and he protects her and he feeds her and he gets her through those very long nine and a half months of carrying that child that is not his. He creates peace for her that in their society she is not allowed to have because she's such a bad girl. Joseph creates peace. He makes peace because God has assured him that God is with us. You see, that's really the answer to all of the problems that we have. God is with us. God is Emmanuel, God with us. God has been in the midst of us from the time it began. God will be in the midst of us until the time it ends and beyond. But we run around, you see, trying to find stuff, trying to find what's gonna make us different, trying to find how we can change, trying to find what it is that will fill this deep longing inside of us when we already have it. We already have the peace that passes all understanding. Remind, remember I told you, Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit to give you that peace. I don't give it to you like the world gives. I'm giving you peace though. We have everything we need to go out in this world and create the peace it needs to bring about peace on earth. But do you know as I researched for this sermon this week, there are a lot of people on the internet talking about how we are never ever going to know peace on earth. That humanity will never ever achieve that system of love and grace and continual peace that God wants us to have. That I think is a very disenchanting notion. That we can't ever do what God expects because we just don't want to do it. If we want peace to reign on earth, don't we have to be the peacemakers? If we want the peace of Christ to be known everywhere we go, don't we have to make it in this world? Perhaps maybe why we have not had peace on earth is because we're not making it for one another. We're not doing everything we possibly can to create the peace that passes the understanding that, that God knows that we are to have. Now, some days I feel very not peaceful. I understand that. I know that we all feel not very peaceful some days. Bills press down on our heads. Health worries come to us. There are children being at our border, separated from their parents every day. That's not peace. There are military personnel who are still fighting wars. That's not peace. We're not making peace there. There are people who are hungry. There are people who are homeless. There are people, as Amy reminded us, in this world who don't even really think about the fact that they have a home or food. That's not making peace. You see, making peace in this world means we're gonna have to go against what the world tells us to do. Like Joseph, we're going to have to create peace when the world tells us to do something different, to create chaos. Like Joseph, we're going to have to be intentional to go out there and create the peace this world needs. Even though the world tells us we don't have to do that. What does the world tell us? The world tells us get what you want and worry about everybody else later. Go ahead, take all you want. 
Go ahead, take the last piece of bread because you deserve it. But we find that when we participate in that idea that we deserve all we can have, that deep down inside we're not really very peace-filled at all. It's when we participate in God's peace, when we create peace with God's help in this world, that we find that we are our most centered. When we walk in the path that God is calling us to walk, that's when we know true peace in this world. So, perhaps maybe it's a rally. Perhaps maybe it's tossing an extra 20 bucks towards somebody that might be in need. Perhaps maybe it's just knocking on the door of a neighbor that you haven't seen for a while. Perhaps maybe it's just helping our kids know that they have the power to change this world. I don't know what it is, but I know deep in my heart that what God calls us to do through the story of Joseph is to create peace in this world and make a difference, even if it's just for one person. To be like Joseph. To say, I'm going to do this because I know that God is with me and it is the right thing to do. To lift up one whom society would marginalize. To help one whom society would reject. To create the sense of God's well-being wherever we go. I don't really know how we're going to do it. I just know that we can if we believe that God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us.